Welcome to Boobies and Newbies, the podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. Happy February, everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I'm joined by one of my good friends and former co-workers. She's a fellow writer and boss babe whose recent production credits include Surviving R. Kelly, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and MTV's The Challenge. Give it up for my friend, M.K. McFarland. Fadden. Welcome to the show, girl. Hi, that was a wonderful intro. <laughs> I'm so excited. And obviously, you've had a lot of experience thus far working in reality unscripted television. Yes. That's how we met. Unscripted is a, a pool that is deep, but you meet a lot of people <laughs> along the way. And you got to jump in. <laughs> you just kind of have to wait in and hope for the best. Yeah, for real. We actually met when we were both working on the real world. We shared a desk. We I didn't did. I didn't know who you were, but I was like, I'm not going to be like gross because I know someone comes in after me, so I'm yeah. going to keep it nice and tight. <laughs> was that your first like Hollywood gig? It was. Mine too. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I tell people my, my first job was on the, the last season of The Real World. So funny. Although <laughs> I think it's coming back, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be on Facebook. And I was okay. like, who it's has, not the same. Who has the time? First of all, who cares? <laughs> Second of all, who has the time? Can you believe, though, for anybody listening who doesn't know what real world is, I'm not sure where you've been the last De- 25 years. I was say the, the entirety of my life. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Because it came out in the early 90s. It was yes. super hot for the first 10 years or so. And, you know, like still. And, I mean, I remember watching it as a. Someone who should not have been watching MTV. Yes. I yes. remember like I remember CT's Paris season because I remember saying to myself, "I want to go to Paris so bad," and I was like ten or eleven. <laughs> okay, so like early two thousands, right? So I remember seeing that, and then I didn't know it was still on. Right. <laughs> I get a job, and I'm like, "This is still on." You know what? Dope. <laughs> Let alone that we would both be hired for our first gigs in LA, working on the same season of Real World. Although it was funny because MK and I never really met we shared a desk and she worked the day shift i worked the night shift yes and with i don't some, think with some character yeah i don't think it was until we moved on to a different show that we actually met in real life yeah, and yeah i think like we had a mutual boss and he was like yeah. oh yeah you guys used to work together yeah. and i was like oh well, it's nice <laughs> oh, to meet you yeah you're that one who i shared a desk with Hope I didn't leave my chips behind. <laughs> well, I'm so excited that you're, we're both on to big and exciting things yeah. nowadays. Things that we have to sometimes keep a little hush-hush. So we'll see if we have any updates from MK in the future. That's how you know you've made it in Hollywood where they're like, we will sue you if you talk about the show. <laughs> you're like, are you working? Yeah. What are you working on? Oh, I can't tell you. I am legally not allowed to tell you what I'm working on. <laughs> that should be good advice for someone who's like unemployed and looking for something like just tell them you're working on something super super tight-lipped my nda does not allow to (laughs) perfect well i'm so glad mk is joining me today and today we're going to be talking about the book once ghosted twice shy a reluctant royals novella by Alyssa cole and this book was published in January of this year, 2019. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. I believe we actually downloaded this book like the day it came out. Pretty much. And you know what? I'm a fan of Alyssa Cole, so it is money well spent on my end at least. And if you decide that you would also like to purchase Once Ghosted Twice Shy, it's available on Amazon for just $1.99, Kindle edition. I was not mad about that. Yeah, (laughs) right? I mean, if it's $1.99, honestly, it could be the biggest piece of shit in the world, and I would be okay with it. As somebody who has gotten salty, I'm still salty about seeing Soul play in theaters. (laughs) So, I, I get a little salty about spending money on something that's bad, but like, this was... Well worth two dollars. That's the purchase that haunted you all your life was Soul Plane. I want my time back. You know what mine was? Mine, mine was a movie too. Was Bicentennial Man starring Robin Williams? No, you. S- I remember seeing that on TV. I, I saw that in the- theaters, <laughs> and we were young. Like I must have been like maybe ten, and it was marketed as a comedy. It was, Went yeah. to go see it. Spoiler, every single person dies in this movie, and I just walked out of it with my dad, and we looked at each other like, what did we just see? You know, cutting a trailer is an art, (laughs) and some people don't have it, because talk about false advertising. Yeah, not for me. Nope. 
Not for me. Anyway, back to Alyssa Cole. Once Goes to Twice Shy is the third story in the Reluctant Royal series. As I mentioned, it's a novella, so it's a quick read. I read it in one sitting. What about you? It took me a week, but I was reading it like at the end of my day. So okay. 15 yeah. minutes. You could really do it either way. I think re- sitting down and reading it all at once only took me a few hours. Yeah, like it's... It's a quick, easy read. It's super quick. Great super for quick. Who don't read on a regular basis. Yeah. So and and you know what? Having read this one, I had only read one of the previous books in the Reluctant Royal series, and I didn't really feel too lost. Like they would mention certain characters that I didn't remember or had never met in the other books, and so it wasn't something that I felt too lost about. But again, I always recommend that people read series in order. Um, MK might have something to say about that too, because she hasn't read the other books leading up to this one. So we'll get to that in a hot second. The next book in this series will come out in April, and there's actually a small excerpt at the end of this book. So if you decide to download it and read, and you'll get a nice little bonus at the end. So before we talk about the book itself, let me talk to you about romance in general. So before having read Once Ghosted, Twice Shy, had you read a romance novel before? If it's not fanfic, no. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Tell me a little bit about fanfic because I guess I missed the boat on fanfic. Like I kind of dove straight into romance as opposed to reading fanfic. I was real late on the fanfic train. I'm real late on a lot of trains. No, it's fine. <laughs> but, I mean, fanfic is great if you like a show and you want two people to, like, have a relationship who, like, never interact. Right. And it's really good wish fulfillment, I think, especially for queer people. Cause it's okay. Like, you know, it's you can see two women or two men on the show have amazing chemistry. And you're like, yeah. these characters should be your romantic focus. Yes. And it's like, but we're going to put this boring girl and this bland dude together and we're going to make you, like, force you <laughs> into, like, wanting them to be a couple. And it's like, but I don't. Right. <laughs> and so, like, like fan- there's so much, there's other possibilities that yes. they're just not thinking about. And I think fanfic's good if you... It, I think it might actually really be a good step into romance because you are comfortable with those characters already. Okay. And then you have like something as simple as they met in a coffee shop and talked for six hours. Yeah. And you're like, no, I believe it because these two have such great chemistry. And right. Like, you know, as opposed <laughs> to like random characters who are new that you're like, who are these bitches? <laughs> you know what? I want to say the only time I've actually ever read fanfic was when I read Twilight. I did not, it was more of like, um, I had read the entire series of Twilight and I feel like most people who read the series kept reading because they were waiting for them to bone. Yeah. And because. I know a lot of people who were like, when are they going to bone? Right, right. <laughs> and so, and in the fourth book, they get married and everything, you're like, finally, this is happening. And then the scene was just like, Pfft. and so I remember looking up and seeing like how people had written the sex scene that they had imagined and like it finally happening. And so that I definitely do remember reading. But other than that, I feel like most of my fanfic references come from a podcast I listen to, which is called And Then They Fucked. And it's this fantastic British or Irish, somewhere in the UK, it's this team and they read and review fanfic, but they usually highlight the especially terrible ones. Like my favorite ones they've done are ones about the Simpsons and it'll be, it, they're usually queer too. It's yeah, usually yeah. Mr. Burns and Skinner or you. Know, it's Don't like, do that to Skinner. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Burns no, it's, is like emotionally abusive, it's guys. Skinner, do that Skinner. It's Skinner and um, the like uh, superintendent or something like, you know, and of course Skinner's the bottom in this situation, like always, well, but. I mean, I mean, I always like Dr. Nick, but like, guys. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I'm that's... Gonna, I'm going to download that and listen to an episode. You should. Cause... They're super funny. So shout out to And Then We Fucked. So fan fiction, great. Not an actual romance novel then. No, usually the romance movies. Yeah, because you are a big fan of romantic comedies. I... It's, it's very surprising for people who know me in real life, but I do it, love Honestly, it surprised me when I, I found out. Love, I love love. And so I love watching nice. people like, fall in love. And yeah. Love. And so I, I kind of love 
watching that kind of stuff. I love romantic comedies too. Romantic. So I am I am right there with you. In fact, if people decide that they want to hear MK and I speak specifically about romantic comedy movies, you will find that in a nice little bonus episode later this month. So look oh, out for that. Look at that. So when you agreed to do Boobies and Newbies, you had some requests. You had some ideas about what you might want to read. Would you like to share those? I know what I'm about. <laughs> like, I, I know me and I was like these people they can't be white it can't be a white dude and a white lady falling in love because I'm not going to care <laughs> yeah and I, was like, if, and I was like if it's queer if it's two black or brown ladies falling in love I'm like halfway invested already right and ask and you uh, <laughs> ask and I shall deliver I mean it's February it's black history month now. yes so like look at you fulfilling the quota I know like, and you know what this one this was perfect because I felt like a newbie in this situation as well because I have read romance before where there is some woman woman action going on right. but it's always been kind of like they're fulfilling a fantasy or this is like part of a threesome. Like it's never, I've never read a lesbian romance story. And so this was actually a first for me reading once goes to twice shy is it, it focuses completely on two women. Look at you. I know I'm you're growing. The, you're the newbies. It's newbies and newbies. <laughs> it's so funny. And you know what? And it's written by a beautiful author of color. Right. Both women on the cover and who are representing the characters in the story are both women of color. I mean, and like look like how I expected them to look. Like yeah. This. Like I've heard enough of these to know that yes. sometimes the cover you're like, who are these people? I know. Right. Or you'll be like, this is so misleading. Like I was picturing something else, you know, you know and like, the book represents what you're getting inside it's like this book yes. you can judge by the cover and actually be correct yeah and that's a good point too and you know what if you take a look did you take a look at all at the other reluctant royals I books i looked at them a little and i was like mm, okay cool. so i really love the color scheme in general and the covers of these series like they're really deep, like purples and blues. And I love that one of our main characters in this story is repping this hot ass suit on the cover. I feel like the author obviously takes a hand in these because I feel like they're very like representative of what she would want. Yeah. You know, it's it's like you can always tell when the author's like, I want, this is what I want the cover of my book to look like. like well, mission accomplished because right. it's beautiful. And it's, it's a beautiful engaging, cover. And it's like, I want to read it. Because it's a beautiful, it's not like a, a pink or like, you know, like a, a white. <laughs> Nobody is ripping off anybody's shirt on they're, the cover. They're not on a pirate ship. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm all for those books too. Like well, that, I'm a fan. Like, I don't get through, me wrong. I through a pirate face. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't? <laughs> but no, I was really excited because when you said I... I want, I'd love a queer story. I would love it to be either by an author of color or about characters of color. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have a specific book on my wish list that is coming out in like five days. And it was once ghosted twice shy. I was like, this could not have been more perfectly timed. And I'm glad that you're the one that I get to talk about this book with. I'm glad to talk about this <laughs> all day. You, okay, so you had never read a romance novel before. What do you typically read? What's your go-to genre? Because I know you're a writer, so I'm assuming you're also an avid reader. I, no, I've been, I literally just saw a picture of myself at two years old, like, pointing at, my mom pointing at a book. <laughs> Look at Snoopy. <laughs> so, uh, I, right now I'm reading Becoming by Michelle Obama. Oh. Very good, very good. But I'm, I've been leaning more towards nonfiction. Okay. So, like, you know what? You're not the first person who's done the podcast with me to say that. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people I've talked to, I would have expected more people to read fiction just as, like, more of an escape. Like, get away from our, you know, the terrible things that go on in our world today. Right. But I do understand, too, that everyone I've talked to who said that they prefer nonfiction, self-help, stories from you know, authors and actors that inspire them. It's more of like they use that as like the inspiration for how to get through the terrible shit that's going on today. So I understand that as well. Yeah, and a lot of it it's ends up being research for scripts. And oh, so, great. Right, I mean, I write sci-fi. So yeah. I have to know a lot about like a lot sometimes. So it's like I read a lot of nonfiction to supplement. So as somebody who write sci-fi i'm curious you read non-fiction like what what are some of the like the types of non-fiction that uh, help you write sci-fi anything from like the creation of facebook like you view oh. like that kind of stuff 
the self-driving cars with Uber. Okay. There's that bad blood book that's on my reading list about the lady who scammed Walgreens. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah, I like would love book. to read that next. That looks like it's, that book seems bananas. <laughs> <laughs> because she kept talking, like she kept saying, oh no, we got it. And everyone's like, but we don't got it. <laughs> we never got it. <laughs> we never got I it. Mean, it's been like scam city these past three years. And so like everyone's scams are falling apart. And I'm like, I will read about all of them. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So I love that you love to watch romantic comedy. You love to read nonfiction. You write science fiction. It's, I mean, it really is a nice mix of, you know, different genres that you appreciate. So that's good. And if the story is good, I don't really care what it's about. And you know what? That's a great thing to point out too, is we've talked about that on the podcast as well, is that oh, I was surprised how great the story was. Or, oh, I just assumed like there'd be a lot more sex and here we are criticizing the story. I'm like, if a good, a good story is a good story. Like it doesn't matter what genre it is. That is, it's like, it's kind of, you're discounting yourself if you think that romance or anything frivolous Mm -hmm. can't be a good story. Absolutely. I mean, I've read like New York Times bestsellers. I mean, like at the end of the day, the story is really weak. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know why we're all... The name. Like, the name. It's like the the name, the author, they got on this right. weird thing, and they're like killing it. And I'm like, good for you, but like, this right. is a weak story. Yeah. You know? No, it's true. And I mean, that's not to say that there aren't... You know, I mean, there's going to be bad stories, bad right. books in every genre. But I feel like it's the same people who say when, especially when reading romance, oh, that's my guilty pleasure. Don't feel guilty about that. Like, if you love what you love to read, it's the same as what you like to watch. I don't feel guilty about watching reality television. Please. Never feel guilt with joy. No. The world is too shitty right now to feel guilty about how finding joy in anything. Absolutely. I find joy in watching Family by the Time on TLC. It is fascinating. Yes. I find joy with Own the it. games. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you're right. You know what? If it makes you happy, you're feeling good, why feel guilty about that? We should never... That's And that's another thing that's so important about romance in general is... These are the books where, generally speaking, the women are the ones finding fulfillment and great relationships and great careers and everything. Everything's working out well for them. And and having great sex. Yes. And like pleasure. Why should you feel guilty about that? Because women deserve nothing, Kelly. I know. (laughs) That's right. I forgot we're the weaker sex. Exactly. Damn. Well, thank you for putting me in my place, MK. (laughs) So... Since we might as we might as well take it from there and just go on and talk about this book. Let me give everyone the brief Amazon synopsis of this story we'll be reading. And apologies in advance if my pronunciation of names is not how you pronounce them or Alyssa Cole intended them to be pronounced. I apologize. It would not be the first time I mess up somebody's name. All right, here we go. While her boss, the prince, was busy wooing his betrothed, Lakotsi had her own love affair after swiping right on a dating app. But her romance had ended in heartbreak, and now, back in NYC again, she's determined to rediscover her joy. So, of course, she runs into the woman who broke her heart. When Lakotsi and Fabiola meet again on a stalled subway train months later, Fab asks for just one cup of tea. Lakotsi, hoping to know why she was unceremoniously dumped, agrees. Tea and food soon leads to them exploring the city together and their past, with Fab slowly revealing why she let Lakotsi go, and both of them wondering if they can turn this second chance into a happily ever after. Aww. That's actually a really good synopsis, I feel like. Like, that's, it covers all the main points, but also not too revealing of like every single thing that happens yeah it's like it gets you in the door yeah and so yeah yeah, good job whoever wrote that i know right (laughs) well done overall impressions of once ghosted twice shy what how would you sum it all up in a few words Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm on the same page with you. I, the whole time, I was like, this is so cute. I think I wrote cute, but real. Yes. Like, I mean, once you can get past the fact that it's funny when you have a main character in a contemporary world, in a city like New York, no less, who is the head advisor to a prince. So, I mean, immediately you think royalty. Like, that's not now, but... 
again, I mean, that is real. That really is somebody's job. Somebody and has to do that. we've got dating apps. We've got, you know, them exploring New York City and going to these fun little spots. Like, I, I was like legit reading some of this. I'm like, is this a real place? Yeah. Like, next time I go to New York, I kind of. When they go to the napping spot? I was like, yeah, I for go real. To the spot. So true. No, I'm with you. I thought it was super cute, but still real. Yes. Um, it, it honestly, I actually, this is the second story. I've read this year for our February podcast. So we have two coming out in February that are book reviews. And both of them have these really realistic love stories, which I feel like people want. Nobody needs a a Disney story anymore. Yeah. We all love the Disney princess. Exactly. Our love will break all the chains. Right. And you know what? It can be this grand, beautiful love story, but also be something that you can connect with. Like too often, I think, I think a lot of people read romance for the escape, but mm-hmm. I think a lot of people criticize romance too, because they're like, well, pff, that could never happen. And I'm like caught in the middle because I am a huge romantic. I love romantic comedies, but I'm also super realist. Like I also think about a lot of things in terms of like, okay, well, that was cute, but <laughs> that's never going to happen to me. <laughs> like, well, I mean, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. If I want yeah. something that's a, an escape, it's like, if you tell me when I start this, this is an escape, none of this is real. Right. And then I'm like, okay, let's get on the right. ride. But if you have painted yourself to be grounded in reality, and then you do some weird thing where, you know, they meet in the airport, and he doesn't have a ticket, but he somehow got past the NSA, <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> where are the dudes that are going to tackle him? Yeah. <laughs> Did he steal someone's car? Like, what happened? Right. I feel like nowadays, at least with, like, books and uh, romantic comedies that are coming out, they'll at least address that to be, like, he buys a ticket, like, at the ticket counter and spends too much money, even but though he's they, not going. But they still kind of stare you down. When yeah. When you roll up, but I need a ticket on the next flight with no luggage. Right. <laughs> They're just kind of like, We're going to put you on a watch list. Why? <laughs> well, and how often do you see them go through TSA? Never. I want a realistic one where they're like at LAX. Yeah. And they're like, I'm going to hurry. And you just see them standing in line and it's like a family of five ahead of them and the kids don't right. take their shoes off. Like, I want to see right. that. I want to see the real Um, Sir, you missed the deadline. You can no longer check your bags. I had that happen to a friend at LAX where she had to leave her bags behind because she was like two minutes late for the 45-minute deadline. LAX is such trash. Yeah, it's probably just LAX. So I'd buy at a Burbank if I can. There you go. There you go. Our LA problem for the episode. LA hack. I feel like we have to have one for every episode, our LA complaint. So there you go. LA hack. Fly at a Burbank. Yeah. (laughs) Done. Anyway... No, this is a super sweet story. It all starts with, okay, here was one thing that I thought about, and I wasn't sure if I liked it, but then I I started to understand it more as I read. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the fact that it starts currently, and then it has these constant flashbacks to when Lakotsi and Fabiola met the first time? I felt like, at first I was like, you know, I was like, okay, guys, I kind of, I'm just getting to know these people, like, I don't really need to go back in time. Right. But... It feels very cinematic. I see Mm -hmm. what she's doing thematically. Yes. Where it's like almost like they're meeting again. And so we see them meet the first time. Right. They're falling in love again. So we see them fall in love the first time. It's like, I understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, as long as you're confident with it. Yes. (laughs) And then I can get on board. I found it helpful for me to understand Fabiola, especially because... We follow Lakotsi for the most part we during the story. It's she, I would story. think of her as the protagonist it's of the story. Her story. Yeah, and so I feel like we follow her more in present day, and we follow Fabiola a little bit more in the past, mm-hmm. the first would, time they meet. I would agree. And so it makes more sense because when you first meet Fabiola in present day, all you really know is that Lakotsi was dumped by her really kind of out of the blue like you it kind of paints her in a bad light when you first meet her it was very much like i was like fab's a user i was like Mm-mm, yeah don't, don't exactly get tra- get, don't get off this accurately stalled train we didn't know what was going on and, and it was weird because she's the one that initiates contact again with the coat and you're like i don't understand why is this girl reaching out to this girl that she's the one who dumped right. all of a sudden but then, thankfully, Alyssa Cole jumps back to the past when they first met, and you get a little bit more info on Fabiola to understand where things 
are going to lead up to this breakup. It made her likable. And I yes. see why she did it. Because if, yes. you, if you do stay in the present, mm-hmm. Fab is not likable. It's true. Yeah. And you, the whole time you're just kind of, even like we were going back and forth, like halfway through the book, I was like, I mean, Fab's cool and all, but like, <laughs> don't. Don't do it. Don't get caught yeah. up in this again. I was talking to Little Code too, like she was a friend of mine. I was like, do not get caught up. Don't in do this it. Web. Do not. Well, you know what? That's a tricky situation too, because like, what's your what's your stance on like exes getting back together in general? I have a strong stance with myself of don't go backwards. Yeah. It's one of those things where, if and I think you, a lot of people would agree. If you understand why you broke up the first time, mm-hmm. and you've mitigated those situations, and you said like, okay, look, the last time we broke up is because you moved or you left the country or you know you had to get some your mental health. Under yeah, control, sure. Try again, but it's like they're a dirty rotten cheater. Do not. <laughs> But something you said actually makes sense. You said if you understand why you broke up the first time. So I think that's kind of the justification for why we can buy into this couple kind of falling back together very quickly is that they never really let go to start with. They never, the relationship ended because Fabiola sent her a text message being like, yeah, this is over. Bye. And, but Lakotsi never knew why there was no follow through. So it really is a story of like, unresolved issues of like kind of picking up where we left off and Mm -hmm. figuring out what went wrong in the first place. Can we move forward? And they do. So very much the coach was like, I'm just here to get closure. Which is how you should react. Yes. When a person waves you down on a stall train, you're like, although it's funny because you know, it's, and they say it's been, it's been what, like seven, eight months. It's been a while. It's been, it's been like not quite a year. Right. Cause it was winter. So yeah. Like- so, but this is interesting too because Lakotsi is living in New York now, mm-hmm. working for the prince, whom you meet in a previous book. So it the good thing is is that it really doesn't matter. Like all you know in this story is that she works for a prince. You're like, okay. And the whole time I was just like this prince, and I was like, I don't really have anybody in mind for this person. <laughs> every time they say it, it was like different people were like popping up. Well, and what's interesting is you never actually meet him you never really meet anybody else in the book that much like besides their besides fabiola's family because her family Mm -hmm. plays into the story in a big way about why they broke up in the first place but you only kind of meet them at the end it was very insular yeah very much like you know what it felt like was like an indie movie where it's like the two people walking around exploring you know oh this is where we fell in love oh do you remember this this is where we did this like you know it felt very much like you know, a two part, a two, mm-hmm. head, you know, like something that two people, you have two really good actors, yeah. they carry the whole thing and make yes. it believable. Yeah. And then you have a day where you can hire four other people. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, nice. Just for like a few quick scenes and right. then you're done. But um, no, and, and you know what, what was funny though is that Lakotsi is in New York and she says she's got the first couple days off she's in forever. Sh- she's got on new shoes, which is somebody yes. who wears loafers and oxfords i totally get what she was like oh yeah did you love her fashion style by the way i was like you're gold right now she's wearing suit jackets and suspenders and those loafers i'm like "Mm, you own it i was like this is i was like you're wearing an outfit i would wear yeah for (laughs) real no as i was reading it i was like oh my god this is mk we have a mutual friend who saw this on your instagram yeah it's an mk and i'm like that's the book i'm reading and she's like Oh, see, I thought of you. And I was like, always Meant to on be. brand. Always on brand. Meant <laughs> to be. I love it. I love that people can connect you with that. That's fabulous. I mean, she's got good fa- They both have good fashion. Yes. It's like, I understood immediately why they were attracted to each other. I've yeah. had enough stories where they like, and I've seen enough TV where they like push people together and you're like, why? Yeah. Are these two, like, did we just pull names out of a hat? Like, I don't right. get why <laughs> these two are supposed to fall in love with right. like, Those two I got. When they were, I liked too that they they had different styles. They Fabiola is obviously like the more outgoing personality. Lakotsi is like you know much more reserved, but like you know can be playful at times right. too. So yeah, they really were a great match, and they meet again on the train. They do. And it's funny because the first time they met was on a dating app, and I, I feel like the first thing I wrote down as a note was. I love that this head advisor to a prince is like prowling around a dating app. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I was like, look, let's see. <laughs> I was like, 
I know what you're about. Of all the gin joints. <laughs> I, know, I know what you're about. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It, it seems like it was meant to be like probably like just like a hookup, right? Like oh, when they first got I together. Mean, they were basically kind of like, we're getting tea because we're not savages. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll be savages. Right. Like, we are respectable people. And we're yeah. Gonna, we're going to at least talk to each other for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right. Just, but not 31, just no, 30, and then we're out. It's like, ooh, my time went off, let's go. <laughs> yeah, like, no, they're both super cute characters. They're, I, I like that you do get to see them falling in love the first time, and then falling in love, or not really ever falling out of love. I mean, they like, were already re, still in love. committing to each other. Yes, because I don't think either of them stopped loving each oh, other. And, no. and it was a quick romance. Like, they talk about how... When they were dating the first time, it was only for what a, a week, was, like a few weeks. It was very much, you know, those old nineties movies. Where yes, it's like when you actually do the math, they've only been talking for like, You're like wait days. a second, <laughs> like we just went on our first date, and now they're going to a ball together. Exactly, <laughs> where it's like, like I've done the math. We've only known each other like a week. Yeah, now it's April. What's right. going on? <laughs> right, but it's like I was. I appreciate them both being like this is weird because like a normal <laughs> person would be like this is weird and like yeah I've met yeah. people where it's like I want to spend like all my time with you right you're amazing and even after a week I'm like I like you mm-hmm. but I don't know if you're like it yeah like, and I, and we never we never really it's not that kind of story like we don't get to see them even at, in the end they they do recommit to each other and you know we find out that the reason Fabiola um, broke broke, up. broke it off in the first place was that there were some immigration issues with her aunt and just a lot of family trouble. She she basically like inherited a kid, a child. She yeah, was very much like oh I gotta be an adult right now. Yeah, I yeah. Really yelled Trump's America. Oh <laughs> my, for real. Like, oh, is this? I mean, I thought this was, was topical as fuck. I thought it was current because like the train stalled and I was like very MTA of you. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I was like, this is real. New and York. they meet on a dating app. Okay, okay. Like, this is real New York. And then they're like, she's auntie's getting deported because yeah. she came in for a regular check and they just kept her. And I was like, Trump is president? Like, right. What? Well, and Fabiola, I connected with Fabiola because she was like getting ready to, she's like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job to pursue the art that I want. I want to make want jewelry. To, I'm going to go into a business. And then, yeah, well, and then she like, gives no. that up because she takes responsibility to help her family out and take care of her niece it's cousin 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 Cousin. yeah it's her aunt's daughter and like she's gonna have to help pay for her going to private school like it's i mean it was this whole thing where you're like oh my god this is really real i was like this i was like that whole thing in itself in Mm -hmm. its own story like when they were like teasing like she's like oh she's gonna be okay i was like yeah what's going on is she sick is she like I was like, what's happening? And then they're right. like, oh no, she's, you know, the immigration got her. And I was like, good God. God. Yeah. Like, and you know what? I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of coincidences, right? Yes. Like I find coincidences lazy. Once so it's fine. Once it, and so my one coincidence, which I will happily accept because of Lakotsi's status in this book is that when she does find out that Fabula's family is having immigration issues, she's like, oh, well, one of my specialties is in working with immigration, so I can help fix that. And I was like, okay, like it's, you know, but because she does work for in, it. yeah, for, for Prince. Prince, you know, for I'm like, okay. <laughs> that, oh my God. Did you picture him too? I like at least once or twice said Wakanda, like I as I was reading that. this. I was like, what is this, Wakanda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in my mind, I'm picturing Chadwick Boseman in a hotel not too far away in New York City yes. while they're falling in love. Yes, of course. And that's where I would be personally. But <laughs> what were some other things? Were there specific moments you really enjoyed or scenes? I enjoyed them going to get food because I always enjoy a food store. Okay. Um, I thought that was so cute. I thought their, their adventures through New York were really good because New York felt like a character. It did. Which is You're right. really hard to do, especially for a place that has been depicted so many different ways. It was so a many fresh times. character, too. Yeah. Like, they went to places in New York where I don't know if they're real or not, but they, they were, they, they're not things you've seen in other stories. I like, mean, I really liked that. Plenty of people have gone to New York without going to New York because of pop yeah. culture. And, like, this was the, 
And I've lived in New York. And so yeah. like, this was a New York that I was like, this feels like a real New York. Right. And this feels like a New York I would want to explore myself. Right. And so like that was great. When Lakoti pulls out the list and it's like all the stuff that Fab was going to take her to. I was just oh. like, oh, my my tender little heart has like... It's per- well, it's, it's the perfect way to show you too that she's not over her. Because she says, Lakoti says... I've got this list of things that I'm doing this weekend that is my get over Fabiola list, but every single place she's visiting is about Fabiola, is about Fabiola and what they could have had together and what Which, they did have together. And you're like, oh, girlfriend, like that. It was one of those things where you're like, I'm not for people getting back together, but I understand this. Like this is, you can see that it, it was never finished. No, they weren't done. It yeah. was very much a um, paused yes. romance. Yes. I don't think they knew that at the time, but... But it all worked out. I did have um, some specific character descriptions that I really liked. Yes. Um, Again, once... if If I butcher her last name, I'm so sorry. But this is when we first meet Lakotsi. It's Lakotsi Adalil... Does that sound right? Adelil? We'll Lakotsi Adelil, mother of schedules and slayer of inefficiencies. I love a Game of Thrones reference. So <laughs> good. So good. And then, um, oh, and her job title is advisor most high. I want that on a business card. <laughs> <laughs> advisor most high. I just love that it's not like lead advisor, high advisor. It's advisor most, most high. high. So like, who's the most low advisor? Like, I know, right? Advisor most low? Like, is that a person? Like, I just also kept thinking, I'm like, I'm shocked that nobody has joked about, like, her being, like, on drugs or right. something, right? Like, like, I thought that would be that's something. That's such an American joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I did appreciate that Fab was Haitian. Like, I was like, this Yeah. Feels, I was like, this feels like, I felt like a new person because I was like, oh, you know, they're talking about things that are not American. And right. So, like, I love because it's like, we're so privileged that most of our content is with Americans. In it. Yeah. So when I read anything or say anything with not Americans, I'm like, I'm watching. embracing it. I'm like embracing it and I'm yeah. watching something and I'm learning something. And learning. It's, yeah. It's like their interactions and, with our states and like right. ways of living is totally eye opening. It's true. You it's know, true. Lakotsi being like, America is weird. I'm like, America is weird. Like, <laughs> it okay. is. We are one big melting pot. Like her, she's like, you guys are just sitting here taking a nap. This is weird. And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, when you say it like that, it's kind of, you know. I was a good like, point. I was like, cool, yeah, you guys went to this random place and you're going to take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. this is weird. And I'm like. I'm like, there's like five places in LA. You could go do that today. <laughs> my college campus had like nap pods. I'm like, yeah. But like to her, she's like, this is weird. And right. Like, we are, we're, you know what, and that I, I totally understand why everyone else in the world looks at us like, oh my God, what is wrong with this right. people? <laughs> so I appreciate this book having like such a feeling like, don't get comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that was something with me, like, don't think that this is something you've seen before. These are not characters you've read before. No, you know, really fresh. Really fresh. Really, really fresh. Interesting. I liked um, Fab's description as well. Hers, uh, her description that I pulled out was, Fab was a bit of a celebrity in her little pinup girl jewelry artist corner of social media in the world that existed outside of boring tax statutes and documents sent to the IRS. Because I'm like, what? What a juxtaposition between this girl who is basically like internet famous for, you know, a her very, clothing and style. A very small sl- I love that it was like yeah. Fab is famous in this in very, this very specific niche. Right. <laughs> a lot of people are famous for very specific things, but like if they went on yeah. the street, no one would yeah. <laughs> They um when they first go on their on their first date in the mm-hmm. in the past, mm-hmm. they uh I think it's Fab who brings up the idea of them doing that um, ask each other questions to fall in love. Oh, yeah. It's, um, oh, she says, I recently read an article that said there were six, 36 questions you could ask a date that lead to following in love. Most of them are boring, though, so I'll only be asking you four. I also have that highlighted because it Perfect. felt like something I would have said on a date. Because I also read that well, article, and so, most of them were boring. <laughs> yeah, for real. But this one struck me because I remember when that list came out a few years ago mm-hmm. because my friend Brittany had just started dating this guy that she met on Tinder right. named Dan, and last September I went to their wedding. Did they ask the questions? They did the questions. They did the questions, and it was like their second date because they had just come out, 
And it was more of just like a silly, like, oh my gosh, I saw this on the internet. We should totally do this. Like, ha ha ha. We're not going to fall in love. Boom. Three years later, marriage. Mm. I know. So I was just like, oh my God, it can work. But I also, like, I chuckled because like that was something I would say on a date. Like, I recently, yeah. I recently read an article because I've always recently read Right. You have. It's true. <laughs> but, um. I only want to fall in love with you a little, so I'm going to ask you more. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I hear you. You're like, I'm not getting totally into this. Just just one ninth. You know, yes. just, just four. Perfect. What was your favorite, um, when they go on their little walk around New York date, mm-hmm. right? And they're kind of re-exploring places that both Lakotsi wanted to forget, but also, you know, have these moments with Fabiola. They go to dim sum. They go to the weird, like, napping place. Mm -hmm. My personal favorite was when they go to the sketchiest museum in all of New York City. Oh, that weird museum in, like, basically an alleyway? (laughs) Yeah, they said it's, like, it's, like, an old elevator to, like, a warehouse that it seems like people just picked up shit off the street and, like, put it up in the elevator and called it a museum. (laughs) I love like dioramas when you go to the museum and yeah. they have like everything and you're yes. just like staring at it. So like the weird nerd in me was like, that sounds so cool. Yeah. But like also, I don't want to stand in the elevator for 15 <laughs> minutes while I read a crumpled up love letter that we found on the street. Well, and we live in a city, we, I mean, we live in a time, but LA especially, we live in a city where there is a new pop up every week. And if you're not there taking pictures for Instagram, it's like, oh my gosh, who are you? But or did it exist? If yeah. You know, if we don't have a pop up museum picture of like the ice cream museum, right. the ice cream museum ever happened. Yes, you exactly. Know? So, so it, this is one I would go to. This I is mean, one I would so go to. If nothing else, one of the categories they have of things in this, I don't even want to call it museum, like elevator. quote unquote museum. Objects removed from anal cavities during emergency room visits. Okay, if you want to see something interesting, the TSA has an Instagram. And oh. It's literally all the shit that they've said you can't fly with. Fascinating. So many That's guns. actually a great so idea. weird looking guns. People are weird. <laughs> I would picture like a lot of weird weapons and like odd sex toys that looked yes. like weapons. Yes, lots of weapons. I'm not talking just like firearms. I'm talking like nunchucks. And like random like knives, like you're just like God. You thought you were gonna get on. It makes you wonder too about the people that are bringing them. Like I'm just like, where? Who are you? And where are you coming from? And where are you going? Yes, I always want to know like why do you (laughs) why do you have this? (laughs) Let alone why did you need to bring it with you on a trip? And why did you think you get through TSA? (laughs) Because I've seen plenty of people on the line with me at TSA. Look at TSA, then get on the line. <laughs> like, I'm about to go mail myself something. You know what I mean? Like, let me it's go back true. to the, the post office section and... It's so true. And mail myself this. Or, you know, chug their booze. Yes. Before they get to the... I know. Oh, that's my favorite is when I see people who are like... There's that commercial now where it's like she chugs the ranch dressing while she's waiting in line yeah. at TSA. And I think that was based off the article that lady was like... I think she was in Japan like she chugged her whiskey because she was like... Yeah, like, oh, I'm not going to leave this here. I'm not going to leave this here. And I was like... I, have you ever had to leave anything behind at TSA? Yes. It was a jar of moisturizer that I'm still... Oh. Uh, yeah, it was like a fresh jar and I forgot to pack it in my check bag. And I was oh. like, this. And I was inconsolable for like 15 minutes. That's... Mine was a um, a container of maple syrup in Denver. Oh. But it was like a specific syrup, like a berry syrup or something like I got at the store that's like the made in Colorado store in... I love bringing home things from places that are like, that's where you get them and everything. And yeah. And so whatever it was, it was some type of syrup and yeah, they were like, oh, well, you're going to, you're going to have to check your bag if you want to do that. And I'm like, I'm not paying extra to check my bag for a thing of syrup. Like, sorry. (laughs) So syrup and moisturizer, RIP. You know, the TSA, they took that syrup and put it in their break room. Oh, yes. God, they're like, guess who's having pancakes tonight? I might took that moisturizer home, but I know they did. Oh, you know what? Here was another thing I really liked. And I, I, it's been a few days since I read the book, so... I'm forgetting the context, but they have this really quick discussion about the concept of ghosts. Did you mark that too? Yeah. It's, and I just, and I feel like it's appropriate though, in terms of the story, just because like fab is a ghost. Like the whole idea of ghosts is that they have unfinished business. That's why they haven't been able to pass through to the next 
world or realm or life, whatever it might be. And so she says in Thisola, is that how you said it? That's how I said it. In Thisola, people didn't fear ghosts. They welcomed visions of the ancestors, but the aftermath was called a second death because you were forced to grieve again after that brief re- reconnection. I highlighted that because it was so beautiful. Yes. No, I mean, it's, it's again, it's little things like that. Or like Lakotsi always references, oh, goddess. I, know, like, I, was like, what's, I was like, oh, you guys have such rich, you know, rich world building. Yeah. In what's this country because I was like, totally like referencing like sayings we have it's a whole theology though that they've set up for this you know obviously made up it's next kingdom like between wakanda and zamunda yeah and and the fictional africa i'm excited too because i know i know you didn't love it as much but like i i liked the preview enough for the next book in the series and i've read one of the other books in the series where i know that this next one that comes out in april takes place in thesola and so I'm, I kind of want to read it just if nothing else to see like what, where they come from is like. Let me know because okay. look, I didn't like it because you know why I didn't like it. Yeah. I, mean, I know what's happening here. I don't need that. And then it happened. So I was like, I don't need that. <laughs> we won't spoil that for everyone. <laughs> but I am willing to skip over. <laughs> D- skip over the romance in favor of the world, the new it. Wakanda. Yeah, the world building of this world. I mean, I've read worse books. For, yeah, oh, for, absolutely. For smaller reasons. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I feel like too often we have to, like, sacrifice one for the other. Like, yes. this incredible world, you know, that we'll see in a movie or on a show, and you'll be like, yeah, but I hate all the people here. What like, here? Yeah. <laughs> what's the point? Um, I, that always reminds me of, there was that Justin Timberlake movie that came out where it was like they replaced the word money with time, because it was like a super hard metaphor hitting you over you the head. Know, that was written and directed by one of my favorite directors. But the movie was weak. But wasn't it a cool idea? Where you're like, what a cool idea. Look, Look at this world. We have to pay for everything with our lifetime. Literally. He's got a great movie on Netflix. I'm not going to say great. He's got a movie on Netflix that, the again, the premise is very cool. A world where you can't be anonymous. Like everyone is surrealing so much that we basically can find you. It's very Black Mirror. Right. But the execution was like mm, not so great. Mm. Who is this? Who's the Andrew Nichols? So he made okay. Gattaca. Oh, he wrote the Truman Show. Like he wrote, oh my god, he made Simone with like Al Pacino, where it's like the first okay. So actress. obviously he's had some great hits so, too. Like, he like his brain is yeah. very interesting, and like he's thinking about like he probably reads a lot of articles like I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he reads a lot of nonfiction probably. and then watches romantic comedies too. And, but it's like. The execution is not all the right. way there. Right. You had a really cool nugget of idea. Yeah. And you didn't massage it enough. Yeah. Apologies in advance as well to anybody listening. If you hear children running amok outside my apartment window, this is one of the hazards of producing an independent podcast. I mean, I was never a child who ran amok because I was always in the house watching TV. When I was a kid, we went to the park. When I was a child, you sat in front of the TV like a normal person. And ate your dinner right there. It had to be forced outside. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay, so one thing we haven't talked about so far is the sexual content and sexiness of this book. So it is a short story, and we have read novellas in the past where there there isn't any sex, and it's a very quick story. And I kind of admire that too, where I'm like, okay, where they're falling in love, you know, they have a very finite amount of pages. Like, I, I don't necessarily need to see them fuck. Like, kind do I? To, but... Yeah, exactly. Like, I kind of know that that's where it's going. But in this one, we kind of have a different thing where, you know, they do have a history. We know that they slept together in the past. They've come back together. They are still attracted to each other. So it's only natural that they should hook up. I mean, I there is a great Judge Judy gif where she's on the bench <laughs> and she's like taps her her watch and then she slams her desk and that was me through some of the book where I was like, but are you guys gonna fuck? Is like, it coming? Is, is it, it coming? Is someone coming? Uh, who's coming? Who's <laughs> coming? I need someone to come by the end of this like, story. I was so invested in their love story and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you guys to physically manifest your love right now. Fair. Like I'm gonna need you guys to like. I, I got to the point where I was like, are you gonna kiss? Yeah. Are you going to kiss? Like, you're doing this weird thing where you're, like, near each other's mouths. Yeah. Touching mouths. Like, 
It, it was, took some time. It was very like, we're just going to chastely hold hands. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I... I did like, though, that they kind of tied everything up first. Like, because we, we get the whole backstory of Fabiola and why she broke up with Lacosi, yes. And it's all resolved before they have sex, right? Very non-American of them. I appreciate yeah. the, the emotional <laughs> maturity to say, like, let's deal let's with solve our this. emotions before we get down. Let's yeah. Get down. You get know, down with the get down. But I was like, I was like, the the young person in me is like, y'all can deal with that shit later. Right. Take your pants off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> take your very nice tailored trousers off. Fold them very carefully. Put them on a hand. Let's be real. You know, Perfect. what folks see is like these are nice pants. I'm not throwing. I'm gonna them hang them up. I'm not throwing them on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But to be fair, we do finally get there. We do. And it's. I thought it was good. I mean, they tease. Where they're like, look, the sex wasn't awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. like, actually, the sex was bomb. Yeah, and, and in I- the past, we that I do like that too. That um, in the past, usually we mentioned it earlier, but they usually go back to these moments that kind of mirror the present, like the first time they met, the first date they have while they're on this new date. Mm-hmm. And there is a moment where it leads up to when they were like going to have sex for like the first for time. the first time in the past. But we don't actually see them have sex in the past. We only see them have sex in the present. Which was very interesting. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, I almost was like, oh, she's going to show us the sex. Yeah. So when we go back to the present, we're going to be like, oh my God, you two, you guys, you have like this amazing kid. Right. You have to fuck. But then it was just like, nope. And I was like, wait. Maybe that's them growing. <laughs> Maturity. I'm so proud of We've grown so I'm much like, in the last seven months. Like, look at us talking about our feelings. <laughs> oh, that's what we do, ladies. Yeah, talking about feelings. That's actually, it's so funny. That's one of my, um, there's a, did you ever watch Sex in the City? Yes. I feel like I reference Sex in the City too often on this podcast, but it's one of my go-to shows that like I'll throw on while I'm cooking. I'll throw on while I'm working. And there's that whole section where Samantha, you know, decides she's going to be a lesbian. She, like, dates Maria. And she's yeah. Like, it's all about feelings. She's like, all we do is take baths and talk about our feelings. Like, I like Samantha. I don't love a bath. Don't love the bath. So. The bath, but not the feelings. Mm, it depends. Yeah. But I don't mind talking about feelings. I'm very emotionally open with myself. Yes. But it's like, if I'm trying to have sex, I don't want to talk about feelings. Right. Unless the feeling is, let's have sex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's be clear. Right. But I don't want to be like, let's talk about how you made me feel when you said get away from me I'm trying to write right as opposed to do we have to talk about that right now while you're inside I me I mean to be fair to <laughs> Samantha Maria was very emotionally unstable yes. and it's like I would be confused in that relationship mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. pretty much like I'm very like don't sweat the small stuff right you know I'm gonna be a great spouse one yes because I'm very much just like do you like I don't yeah I'm, I'll go along with it if you have this crazy idea right it's fine but even I was like, I have whiplash. There weren't really fireworks in terms of emotions with Lakotsi and Fabiola. I was actually surprised. I thought there would be more like tension or not even like yelling, but there's really like no, no fighting animosity. or conflict. Like it's really pretty straightforward. Like the conflict is like inner turmoil of like, can I Get accept her into my life again? Like without knowing what happened, you know? So it you wasn't know. melodramatic, which no. I kind of. It's like, part of me was like, get melodramatic. But. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that for the realism of like. Exactly. M- I feel like most mature women would not get melodramatic. They yeah. would want like, why would, why did you text me that we're done? Mm-hmm. And then like basically block my contact. Right. And most women would want that. And then and- at the same time, most women aren't aren't going to be like so straightforward with exactly what they're feeling because they're right. they're scared about what their partner right. is going to think. I mean, like it's such a natural feeling to be insecure about like, oh my gosh, I, I don't want to lose them. Like, and it, it was a new relationship. Like, I totally, yeah. like, like, I don't like the way Fab did it, but I no. totally understood what Fab was doing. Right. It's like, this is a new feeling. Like, we get out now. Right. Like, we don't even have enough of a foundation yeah. to talk about this. Like, exactly. We just met like, I'm just going to cut this off right It's now. not fair to me to put this pressure on you. This is not what you signed and up for. And it's not fair to Fab because mm-hmm. it's like if I really start to like you and then it doesn't work out, I'm going to yeah. be more devastated because I like put all my energy into this. Amen. You know. And, Amen. So it was, it was very, um, it was very not sex in the city. 
Right. No, it was very real. It was very mature. It's You're right. It was two mature women, you know. So, I mean, at times it kind of, you'd be like, okay, let's go. Like, come on. I want, you know, like I want you to, I want to see the passion, yes. you know. And, and I feel like when we get to the sex, it's very, it's nice. It's, it's good. You know, I've, I've read enough sex scenes and it's like, this was a very much a, loving sex scene. Love making. It, was, it wasn't like we're making love. Because it was like <laughs> we're having sex. Yeah. But it was like a lovingly having sex. It was it was, it was definitely closer to love making for yes. me than it was to like fucking. You know? Right. So I mean it's like it's primal, but it's like I'm primal right. and passionate because I love you so much. Right. Like, I, Which I'm fine. That's right. for this context I'm like it's absolutely fine. Like that is that's what they've been building towards anyways. Right. Let's be in love and have a relationship. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, you I'm know like, this is is nice it's like this felt like a satisfying ending to mm-hmm. them like falling in love the first time yeah. and then having that little break and then realizing that they still cared about each other and being like we're not yeah. going to sacrifice our own happiness right life. right i feel like i would have loved if there were a couple moments of lakotsi being like a little bit more emotional or like fiery passion like something like i felt like she was a little one note for me like throughout where I was like, I understand, like, we're getting your inner turmoil, but she keeps everything very much on the inside. So I was waiting for the moment where it's like it spilled out or spilled up, you know, so, something. So that was like, if I had a complaint, I, I, had a I guess it'd be that. But like, I mean, my thing was, I was like, I don't, I've not read the previous book. So I was like, I wonder about Lakota's characterization. Yeah. The first time she's there, but she's not like. Like, she, I mean, she's there as the, what is it? The advisor most high. <laughs> so it's like she's there. You don't really get to know too much about her. Um, I only read one of them, though, so I'm not sure about the other one. I can't speak for so that I'm one. So I'm wondering if it's like if you've read these two books, so you kind of have a sense of who mm-hmm. Lukosi is. So you, it's almost like shorthand. Like, you yeah. don't really need to get that in depth. Like right. At this point, you should know who You know her. Is. Yeah, because that's the beauty of, like, these little novellas is usually they're, like, the little side bonus books that authors will write to be like okay you read this book featuring the prince and this girl remember that side character that was there that everyone loved well guess what i wrote a little bonus story about her it's like a it's like a surprise marvel movie it oh it totally is that's actually how i've described romance in the past is like they'll have their own little Marvel universe where you'll you'll meet the entire Navy SEAL team and each one will have its own book or it'll be a hockey team and like each player will have its own book. And so it's kind of like you'll see recurring characters yeah. and if you read the whole series, you'll love it because you're getting like a little bit of everybody all Bye. the time. But we've read books for this podcast before where we've come in and read book number five in a series and I've read all of them but my guest has not and they're like who the fuck is this guy like why, I, should, I care about why should I care about him I don't know who he is I don't know what they're talking about and I'm like oh yeah that's right you haven't read all these other stories this one I think is definitely okay as a standalone yeah. like I feel like you could read this without reading the others I wasn't lost like it yeah. was one of those things where it's like it would be helpful mm-hmm. if I knew stuff from the other two books but yes. I'm not sitting here like who is this and what is right. that and why do I care about this and what are, you know it yeah. was kind of like hmm that is that's someone that's important that I don't know about <laughs> well and it's helpful that it's very contained it's yes. just the two of them it's for very, the most of the story it's a contained story you know we do see her butler dude friend oh yeah which I, which I was like this is this is a nice interaction where I, I like that like, I'm like I'm learning about Lakotsi who she is with her friends yes and I feel like that's important because yes. we see Fab's family so we know who Fab is in the context of people who know her before Lakotsi and it's nice and we get to see a little bit of Lakotsi's life too before Fab and it's yes. like that was something that was mm-hmm. missing but I think it's in the other books like we yeah. don't know Lakotsi before Fab right like everything about Lakotsi we learn is in context of Fabiola would you after having Having read this story, would you want to go back and read the other two books? Like, are you inclined to do that? I I would read the one with the prince. Okay. Out of curiosity. Okay. Because it's like we keep talking about him and his betrothed, and yeah, apparently and how she, her role that she plays in their lives. Right, and apparently like they're really good friends, and mm-hmm. like Lakotsi and the betrothed are like really good friends. Yeah. And the prince and his babe are like you need to get out more and do things. Perfect. And so like, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I want to see how you two fell in love and if 
Are you as insufferable as that you sound? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good to know. Okay. Yeah. Well, we might just have to investigate that. Yeah. So before we rate and review this fabulous story that obviously we both enjoyed, we how about we uh, we touch a little bit more? <laughs> we touch. We touch a little bit more on um, a nice little sex art from the story. Did you yes. have a specific? I think there only is one, right? Yeah. There is one. I think I highlighted one. I'm okay. Gonna... I highlighted one too. Um, it's it's a fairly long and detailed scene. It is. I mean, you know how good sex scene is. I feel like it's when my face gets hot and I feel like I shouldn't be in the room. Yeah. And that was, this was getting there where I was like, ooh, I should not be in the room. Like, I just opened to it and the first words that stick out to me are panted, licking, and throbbing. So you know it's going to be good. Right. I had, good yeah. word choice, Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole was like, I know what I'm about. Yeah. <laughs> And I know what I need to put in here. Okay, where did you highlight? I highlighted, um, let's see, they both laughed and maneuvered themselves over to the giant king-size bed that dominated the hotel room. Lakosi tried to push Fab onto her back, but Fab had more leverage and made sure to come out on top. I lead, remember, she ran her hands down Lakosi's body, one cupping her breast, the other continuing downward. Palms sliding over smooth skin, wiry hair, until her middle and index finger notched over Lakosi's clit. First of all, nice. I appreciate the term clit. Let's yes. be adults. It's oh, yeah. Right. But I also enjoyed this little nugget into their dynamic where it's like, mm -hmm. we've had sex before. Mm -hmm. You know I lead, right? Yes. Because <laughs> like, we get that when they dance, too, in like right. their first date in the past. And I was just like, I this couple feels lived in. Yeah. And I I would rather nine times out of ten with a romance sort have a lived in couple than a meet cute couple. Okay, that's nice. I feel like lived-in couples are harder to do well. Oh, it's true. It's true. That's actually uh, one of the scripts that I'm working on is right. like a pair of exes. And so it's the finding, you know, how can they come back together? Right. Like there's so much history between them. And exactly. even when you're developing the story, it's, you know, you do need to know like, well, why did they break up the first time? You know, what's changed since then? You know, so I mean, there definitely is a lot more thought that has to go into it. And it's like, it, this is like, I was so happy for them in that moment. Yeah. A, because we got sexing. But B, <laughs> because it was like, like they're obviously in a rhythm. Right. And they're comfortable with mm -hmm. each other. And it's not so much of, I'm awkwardly trying to make this person have a no. good time, but it's like, we know how to have a good time. We've done this before. This, this is, this is more of like the new beginning. Right. Like this is us starting over again. Starting over. Yeah. I, again, chose the same scene because it's the one we have. But, my, I mean, just go to show you, like, how good and detailed this scene is. Mine is three pages after, at least on a cell phone Kindle app. Yes. It's three pages <laughs> after. And it starts with, Goddess, Lakotsi moaned, writhing on the bed. And even though Fab knew she wasn't talking to her, she took it as encouragement. She whirled her tongue hard, then following with soft, gentle laps that she knew left Lakotsi eager for more. She stiffened her fingers, still moist from Lakotsi's pleasure and her own tongue, and slicked them into Lakotsi's channel, turning her wrist as she thrust in and out, feeling Lakotsi's inner muscles clamp around her fingers as they swirled. Lakotsi's fingers threaded into Fab's hair, holding her in place, and when the loud, unrestrained moan broke from Lakotsi, when her thighs clamped around Fab's face and her pussy squeezed Fab's fingers, Fab's own body trembled on the precipice of orgasm, just from the touch and taste and scent of this woman she loved who was finally hers again. Oh. I mean, I remember reading something from a screenwriter and they were talking about like the art of the sex scene mm. and I think it's very important to like acknowledge that sex scenes have to have a purpose yeah and it's like you have to be saying something about the characters or about this moment in their lives yeah and like that one's such a good one because it's like they are Fab and Lakotsi again they're yeah. not Lakotsi and Fab they're Fab and Lakotsi they're Fab Coatsy Fab Coatsy that's yeah. their shipper name they there are, you go they hashtag are, Fab Coatsy yes <laughs> they are, you know, in love. And I also appreciate that Alicia basically was like, for a woman to have an orgasm, you have to put in some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, this, for real. It's not just like, oh, I touched her clit. She came. Like, like that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. You got to put in some effort. Yeah. Put in some effort. You know, got to love up. a woman writing about a woman's sexuality. Right. Like put in some effort. <laughs> <laughs> and get your rewards. Here right. you go. Yeah, that's how it so works. So funny. 
some dude over here is probably taking notes like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you should. You should. I mean, honestly, I feel like what's funny is I feel like the the books we reviewed on this podcast with men, a lot of, or let me, specifically heterosexual men who have said, you know, this is something that I feel like would be great for couples to read. Like, I feel like this would be great for couples to read together as kind of a way to spice things up in the bedroom, little inspiration. If it's, it opens communication, I'm yeah. all for if it opens communication, I'm all for it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, I love it. But, um, okay, wonderful. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about from the story before we do our quick ratings? Let me see. Let me look at my notes. Oh, I, I, I've highlighted a quote. Finding a sex partner is easy, Lakutsu replied. Finding someone that makes you need to know more about them is not. Mm. And I was like, why is everything Lakutsu says, like... It's very, <laughs> like, not bumper sticker-ish, but, you know, just very, like... Self-help inspirational like quote on instagram yes everything is a instagram caption monday motivation also there is something i highlighted cat daddy and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> oh her um the prince when fab meets the prince he's like he was definitely cat daddy material but fab wasn't interested and i'm like <laughs> i was like i have not read the term cat daddy i haven't either in ages like the last uh, the last time i heard it was someone making a joke about somebody being a cat daddy i don't think i've ever read it in something i was like that's such a oh okay so on the same lines of something that you've never really read okay fab uses the term brick have you heard that before i have heard brick okay but i'm just like then i'm on the late train like you're obviously (laughs) ahead of me on that one i have heard brick she uses it to describe it being cold. cold. I feel like that is, like, my family's from Brooklyn. Okay. And I don't feel like brick is a Brooklyn term. Okay. But someone can yell at me. Because I, I wrote down, I was like, I know, she lives in, it's Brooklyn, right? She lives in Brooklyn or li- Queens. If she lives in Queens, that sounds like brick. I just remember, she's thing. not in Manhattan, no. and she. Which I appreciate it. And she, uh, she comes from a, she's a first generation Haitian. Yes. Haitian and American. so I thought that was interesting. And so I, I wrote down, I was like, I'm not sure brick is like, is this a New York thing? Is this a Haitian thing? Like it's New York. Okay. I mean, I've, I've never heard someone in Brooklyn say okay. brick, but I've heard brick. Well, if anybody in New York is listening and you use the term brick to describe it being cold outside, like, damn, it's so brick. I would love to hear from you and know the origin of this word. I mean, I love slang because... <laughs> I just love slang because it took me out and I was like, Brick. Brick. Like, well, she has to explain it to Lakotsi, but I'm like, Lakotsi lives in another country. I understand that. And I was like, who says Brick? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just don't say it here in LA because it's never Brick here. I mean, to be fair, when it hits 55, people are like, Bubba. I know. Oh my God, we can't survive. It's too Brick. Where's my where's my coat where's my coat like i have a coat that's like for like snow. i don't have a coat i have a coat for snow and like i remember my mom it was like 40 degrees my mom was like you wear this i'm like that's like, for like 20 degrees i would sweat to death in that coat she's like that is true <laughs> yeah, it's true. It totally is. Okay, so last thing we'll do then as we wrap up is I'm going to ask you to give the book three grades. You're going to grade out of 10, 10 being the very best that it could be, for the story, the syntax, and the sexcapades mm-hmm. of Once Ghosted, Twice Shy. Right. So let's start with story out of 10. What do you think? My heart says like six and a half, seven. Like, oh, okay. That's actually lower than I expected it yeah, to be. I mean, look, I, I unfortunately read a lot of stories. Okay. And so, like, the simplicity of the story mm-hmm. makes it go down one or two, because I feel like... That's fair. I feel like we could have had a little bit more going on. That's fair. it's just them walking around New York. Yeah, that's but true. But it's executed well. Hence the seven. Do you think um, it would have worked... Like, would you have wanted to see this in full novel form? Like, do you like it as a novella, or do you for think the, it could have been a novel? For the amount of story it is, it's a novella. Okay. But if this was the jumping off point yeah. to them, they're a longer courtship. Uh huh. Oh, will they? Like will? if we had started even maybe in the past mm-hmm. and like just kind of gone chronologically mm-hmm. through their relationship. Or will they? Won't they? Yeah. The thing where it's like mm-hmm. they reconnect and then it's like, oh, we'll be friends, and so we have six chapters. Of right. Romantically being friends. Right. And then we could have had a novel. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I gave it an eight, and I think for me it was that I'm I'm totally with you in that it's. It's a very typical romance, romantic comedy trope of, 
you know, they, they're walking around revisiting their past and, oh, remember we did this here? Like, I get it. It's very simple. For me, what was fresh for the story were the characters, the fact that it was two women. They both have very different heritages and backgrounds. I just, it was like the whole atmosphere. I definitely was like, this is, this is different. This is fresh. I feel like a newbie in places of this. So I liked that a lot. So yeah, I'm going to give it an eight. How about syntax, Miss uh, Alyssa Cole's writing? I'll give it an eight. Yeah. Because it's like she's not trying to wow me with $5 words, which I appreciate. No. Like, don't do that. But... When you heard that sex scene, it is like really... Simple. It's simple, but it, it flows really nicely. I and like, feel like <sighs> everything she wrote was purposeful. Yes. You know, everything that she wrote, every mm-hmm. turn of phrase. Mm-hmm. You know, Lakoti has a voice. Yeah. Fab has a different voice. Yeah. Which, you know, it's hard to do anyway, but she did that in a novella. So yes. she doesn't have a lot of real estate yes. to make these fully fleshed out people with fully fleshed out, you know, ways of speaking and fully fleshed out, you know, turns of phrase. And mm-hmm. also, she painted New York. It's mm-hmm. a brand new place. And it was really consistent too. Like talk about the characters and everything. Like I feel like sometimes you'll see certain characters make choices that you're like, that doesn't seem really yeah. on brand for you. But I was with them throughout this one. So I gave it a nine. I gave her syntax a nine. I really do. I've read Alyssa Cole before. I will continue to read Alyssa Cole. I really do enjoy her writing. I think she's a favorite amongst romance novelists by other novelists as well as romance readers. She's great. Yeah, she she has a very she has a clear voice too. I feel like if you read a story from her, you would know, oh, this is an Alyssa Cole book. Like this is I think she definitely has something that's very much her. So I like that about her. That's really that's great. Yeah, yeah. that's what we all want, right? I mean, as writers. Yeah, we do want that. And I like that she's consistently yeah. like making these books be like this is me. Like this yeah. is what I want to bring. Well, you know, what's interesting too is she, everything I've read from her has always had a, the main characters in them are always minority. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I'm like, fabulous. I mean, you're a black woman, you're writing black female characters. It's perfect. But she also writes historical romance with the black leading ladies. And she writes, obviously these contemporary fairy tale romance. I'm like, you are really cornering like every yes. section. I and love all this. The black women find love yeah, I haven't read. Um, I haven't read. She has another historical series that I really want to read, and so I'm like, ooh, yeah. I, I wish your listeners could see my face because I, I got really excited. <laughs> I was just like, like, ooh, something else to add to my reading I was list. Like, well, then, why not? Uh, yeah for real we'll have to take a look at that i don't know it off the top of my head but we can look for sure um okay and lastly sex capades so okay that scene was like that was a scene yeah it wasn't kind of like a you know pan to the window or a you know (laughs) and then he pulled her into deeper waters but it was like it was it was hot yeah but also it was like poignant and important which, yeah absolutely good job team like yeah for sure no and it and again it's you mentioned like uh fab takes the lead like there's there's the same moments of their characters that we fell in love with yeah. like also in these I sexy felt like scenes she was writing it like these two people are having sex now. i'm not writing a sex scene and then just putting names in it like, yeah like these two it's people are these having- two that's actually a great i love that you said that because that's something that I've noticed before where you'll be like, this is a really hot scene, but it feels like it was just kind of placed in this book. Like somebody keeps like a file of these hot scenes. Like, okay, where can I put this one? Where can I put this one? We mentioned this in another episode and I forget which one it was. Now I'm picturing like a Rolodex or something. Yeah, right. Like, okay, okay. Um, let's see. Wax play, BDSM. Okay. On a bed, on a couch, on the ferry, in the bathroom, at the club. And like just like rip it out. Like, yeah. Copy and paste but like- this one was so, you're right. This was so specific to their characters. I love that. That's a great point. I gave it an eight. I thought it was, it was really well written. It was it was quick. I mean, it's not quick in terms of like, the scene is pretty long, but, right, but I understand it wasn't a slog to read. Yeah, read exactly. Where you're like, okay, guys, yeah, but, like for real. And this really <laughs> is like the last thing you see before they go to the epilogue, which is like a year later. They've been dating. They meet the family. Okay. She's gonna propose. Uh, uh, Cute. Uh, 
So overall, it seems like you were pretty happy with this selection. Look, I read this coming home from after work, and like this was a great thing to like shut my brain off, watch two people fall back more mm. in love, go to sleep, yes, dream good dreams, you yes, know? love it, great, and and we've talked about it, but it seems like you would be willing to read another romance, yeah, specifically Alyssa Cole, probably, well, yeah. I will probably Look, this is, I'm like, this is open to the door. Yeah. I might poke my head through once in a while. I'm so glad. I love, although I know you and you know you and I know you're not going to go out and read just any romance. No, I mean, I'm all for, does this fit me? Yeah. Is this, is this something I want to read, which is, I feel like, half the battle. Which is, is totally fair. Like, I would not by any means consider myself a fan of science fiction or fantasy, but I'm a huge fan of the Sookie Stackhouse book series that turned into True Blood. Oh. So, I mean, that was kind of like the only thing I really read that was of that, that variety. I yeah. Think there's a lid for every pot. Yeah. And I feel like even if you don't love a genre, you can find something in a genre. Absolutely. That you love. And that's why you should never discount it. And I'm glad that you haven't discounted romance. I am a new fan. Yes. Am I a new boo? <laughs> yeah, you are now a newbie turned booby. Awesome. <laughs> okay, perfect. So thank you again for joining me today, MK. It was yeah. dope. I'm so glad. I feel like sometimes when I have people on who have never read a romance, never thought about it, that it's it's always a crapshoot of like if you'll like the book or if we'll choose one that's really good. And I'm glad I chose Alyssa Cole because I knew it was going to be good to start with. Well, you know. She's a great writer, and this was a great, good, good choice. Yeah, good introduction good to the intro- genre for you. Yeah, good introduction for, like, new romance for you. Yes. We both opened up new worlds for us. I know. I need to read more lesbian romance. Do it. Okay. That's going to be like, a goal for 2019, more, more queer romance. More queerness in your life. It's Absolutely. It's a goal for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so not just for me. For everyone out there, add it to your list of resolutions for 2019. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, well, we'll end it there and say goodbye and thank you so much. Thank you for having me.